Hello, I'm Mr. McBrien. This is TIJ10, Arduino 6, Inputs. Yesterday we talked about decision making and the ways that we can implement algorithms that make decisions. Today we're going to talk about fueling these decisions. We're going to talk about how to bring in information we can use to make our decisions in a smarter way. So what we need to understand is that, uh, well, okay, here's our quote from history. The only thing that is constant is change. All right. So why is that applied to our devices? Well, almost no device that's of any use can function independently of its environment. They all have to see when things are changing out there. I'd invite you to think about do you know any independent devices, devices that always do the same thing with no inputs from the environment? If you think carefully, you can probably think of some, but there aren't many, and especially there aren't many that are terribly useful. Now, in contrast, think about the idea of an adaptive device, something that changes according to something outside of its own um, shell something that accepts inputs from the outside world and then appropriately reacts to this. And I think what you'll find is that the majority of devices accept inputs. Now, we already talked about circuits that make choices. That's really what the Arduino is all about. Well, we've also looked at the concept of having a loop that waits for input from the serial monitor. Well, in fact, with similar implementations, we can implement a loop that waits for input from other devices. So it monitors, instead of looking at the serial monitor, it looks at given pins. And so Using our if functions, then we can have our sketch change its behavior based on the value we, we receive from one of these pins. So that change in behavior could be going into standby mode if you press a button. Or it could be comparing the results from several different uh, sensors and making decisions based on that. Now, before we go any further, let's illustrate a simple interactive system. So we'll get a good sense of how the loops work and things like this if we look at a flowchart. And we don't do enough flowcharting, I think, in this course, but it's we're time constrained, of course. So what we can do is we can set up a loop in our Arduino that monitors a switch. So it checks to see if a a button has been pressed. If that button has been pressed, it can do something. If it hasn't, it just goes back to monitoring it again. So if it's not been pressed, it says, okay, I'm going to keep checking this switch. But as soon as it has been pressed, that's when it can go do something exciting, start a function. Right? And that's exactly what we did with our while statement, monitoring the serial monitor. We just kept watching that serial monitor, waiting for that user to finally put something into the uh, input box. And then we could start our function. Well, that's exactly what we're talking about here, except we need to talk about what other kinds of inputs we can have besides the serial monitor. So Arduinos can accept input sources from users, from the internet, from various sensors and other devices, actually. So we're going to focus most of our energy, though, on a few individual items. We're not going to focus on the Internet because that's maybe a bit complicated for this short course of ours. So we'll focus on some, some other aspects of it. We can connect uh, 
little bits of hardware or more complicated bits of hardware to an Arduino to allow it to react to users. We can have switches, we've already mentioned that. We can have dials, we can have keypads, we can have even have touch screens that attach to the Arduino. There are lots of interesting things we can do to allow the user to let the Arduino know what they want it to do. So for example, we can have a user pressing a switch and power is connected to the circuit until the switch is pressed again. So it works like a toggle. Or we can have a passcode, which we enter into a keypad and that disables a security system. Something one of my grade 10s implemented just a few years ago. Now, in addition to user input, we can accept input from all kinds of different sensors and sensors alone are a very interesting uh, aspect of computer engineering. There are lots of different kinds of sensors to which the Arduino can connect. And sensors, it's worth noting what a sensor really is. A sensor is a circuit that changes its behavior in response to its environment. So what do we mean by the environment? It could be a sound, it could be light stimulus, it could be a bump, it could be the detection of some kind of chemical in the air or in the water. So this corresponds nicely with the idea of our senses. And there are lots, lots more as well. Flame sensors, temperature sensors, all kinds of different things. Sensors can detect infrared, which our eyes can't even see. They can detect water and water in the air. They can detect heat or its lack. They can detect flame, lots and lots of different things. Almost whatever we need. Let's look at a few examples of implementations then to illustrate what some of the things we can do. An Arduino can be turned into a night light that turns on a, an LED light if there isn't sufficient light hitting a light detector. Very simple implementation. Or an Arduino can have an IR sensor which detects a pattern and then based on that pattern changes its behavior. So this is exactly what a remote control is. We're going to gloss over the internet Im uh, implementations for purposes of this course because there simply isn't time to look at this. But of course these are very exciting implementations. Arduinos can be connected to a Wi-Fi shield or an Ethernet shield and have access to the internet where uh, we can control Arduinos with apps or even monitor websites like Twitter. So uh, we can also have a PC run a program which connects to a network, which then connects to the Arduino through the network. And so the Arduino can react to a PC and what it's doing. A couple of internet examples. Uh, an iPhone app sending commands to a, an Arduino that could control a thermostat. Relatively easy to do. Uh, you can have the Arduino looking at a website and examining it for specific results and sounding a siren when the Leafs score, if the Leafs ever play a game. There are other devices that can connect to the Arduino if they have appropriate output. We can have Bluetooth and all kinds of other things. We're not going to get into too much of this at this stage. But the <clears throat> We're not going to get into too much of that at this stage, but the implications are interesting. You could do some crazy things like have an Arduino monitoring its location and so you can hand off a lockbox to, um, to the person you want to propose to. This was actually an implementation by someone some years ago. A lockbox with a series of clues. And each time uh, 
each time the woman made it to the given location, it checked it off as having been reached. When all of the locations had been reached, the lockbox opened and the engagement ring was inside. See, you can still be a romantic and a geek at the same time. So we can ask ourselves, how does the Arduino detect and use inputs? It depends on the type of course. Usually we put some kind of status check in our loops, like that while loop. Sometimes we'll have the Arduino just wait. Sometimes it'll keep checking while it's doing other things. And of course, the implementation will determine the kind of code that we use. Now let's have a look at some of the uh, most important commands that we're going to need as we're starting to now accept inputs. Now the first thing we can consider is this idea of an analog read. What this does is reads the voltage at a given pin, anything between 0 and 5 volts. Now uh, the Arduino actually will, if it's 0 volts, output zero. If it's five volts, I'll put 1023. And anything in between is a linear response. But we're going to focus today more on this situation of uh, a digital read. So we can, from the pin, have the Arduino decide whether that uh, result is a high voltage or a low voltage, five volts or zero. And so this is a much simpler output to deal with. We either get a one or a zero. And if we design our system well enough, if we have the right kind of detector, this is as much as we need. So this is the one we're going to use today. But either way, these commands read the potential at the pin and assign the result to a variable, either a number between 0 and 1023 or a number between 0 and 1. So uh, digital just meaning on off, analog being a value, uh, various sensors will be either digital or analog. We're going to see a way today to take a what amounts to an analog sensor and turn its result into a digital output. So our analog sensor that we're going to use for a digital output well, it's a light-dependent resistor. So it has a high resistance when light is not hitting it, a high resistance in the dark, and a low resistance in the light. And we can even take a multimeter and ex do some experiments and see how that works. But instead, what we're going to do today is we're going to implement a simple night light um, by using this phenomenon, the fact that the resistance of the LDR changes when light hits it. We're going to use the, the Arduino input pins to detect light. Okay, so how do we do this? It's really a pretty simple circuit. This is a partial circuit here. This is really as much as we need in terms of a schematic, at least for the detector portion. So what we do in order to design a circuit to detect light, we run 5 volts out of the Arduino into a light-dependent resistor. And then, at that point, our circuit branches. We run one wire to an input pin on the Arduino, and then the other we run through a resistor into ground. And some quick experiments with a multimeter will show you that when the LDR has a low resistance, the voltage at AO tends to be close to 5 volts. When it has a very high resistance, the voltage at AO tends to approach 0 volts. And this is exactly what we need. So essentially, to sum that up then, the higher the resistance of <clears throat> the LDR, the lower the voltage we'll see at AO. Here's another look at that circuit then. We're measuring the potential difference between points AO and the ground. 
And here's what's cool. If we use a 100K resistor as that fixed resistor, our Arduino should output a zero if there's no light in the darkness and a one if there is light. So this gives us the logic we need to be able to implement the other portion of our nightlight, the output portion. So the decision becomes very simple. We implement, uh, first we find out what the voltage is at pin AO. And if it's zero, we turn on the light. And if it's a one, we turn the light off. And we already know how to turn the light on and off. And we already know how to check a value to find out what it is so we can make our dependent code on that basis. So our assignment today then is to implement an Arduino nightlight. So you're going to wire the circuit that we that we saw in the previous slides. Make sure we declare that input pin and then implement an if statement in the loop section of the code to check the potential at that pin and light a light as appropriate. Now, if you're looking for an additional challenge, some of you will find that pretty simple. If you're looking for an additional challenge, you can implement a second detector uh, loop in your sketch. In your setup, just implement a loop to mo monitor a button that turns on your nightlight. And your nightlight won't function until, until that button's been pushed. So you can do that by just simply uh, monitoring a second pin in addition to AO. And in the setup section of the code, um, monitor the button, wait for the button to be pushed before you allow the Arduino to move to your loop code where your Arduino is. But I want to emphasize this. Be sure and implement your nightlight first. Make sure you've got that all up and running before you start looking at the extension. Okay, so then the key points from today. Arduino input pins monitor potential difference, voltage. The values that come out of them can be digital, on, off, or values can be analog, 0 to 10, 23. We can use these inputs to monitor for button pushes. We can use them to uh, look at the outputs from given sensors. So for your homework, be sure and do that Arduino nightlight. And these references may be helpful in looking at that. So thanks very much and have a great night.